Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! My name is Dracon Llewellyn Fuzzbottom Jr. and these are some of my patrons! Snow Kieran, Hidudu, Theo Vellum, and a special thanks to my special sponsor, Lit Dragon. When we last left off, we got the most powerful sword in the game. It is... Um... The level 4 sword. I don't know if it has an actual name. It's recolored from the original version of this game. Uh, the light sword? We'll call it the light sword. Or maybe the silver sword? Because we also got some silver arrows in the last episode. Yeah, let's go with that. The silver sword. So... We're going to be going here today to level 7. There in level 7 is Princess Zelda. And that's right, we are finally going to be rescuing Princess Zelda. Again. Also in the last episode, we just about finished collecting all the heart pieces in the game. There is only one heart piece left, and as it so happens, it happens to be in the dungeon that we're going to today. So let's go ahead and make our way there and hopefully not take... Ah, no, no, why did you wind up there? Ah, magic cape. Darn it, magic cape. Unfortunately, oh, you can't use the magic cape to get past these guys. Ah, why are you guys so annoying? Unfortunately, Despite having the most powerful sword in the game, it will not kill those guys. That sucks. Uh, well, I don't think I need to use a potion or fairy just yet. There'll be a little bit of health along the way. You know what? Since all these enemies are so annoying, let's let's do this the easy way. Cause. For some strange reason, there's actually less enemies here in the Dark World. You know, think that it would actually be more dangerous in the Dark World, but nope, it's not. By the way, if you, even though I cannot kill those rock monsters with this sword, this sword is still pretty powerful because on my practice run, well, just take a look at this. There, down in one hit. And that is how it is with most of the enemies in this game at this point. Going down in one hit with my silver sword. Of course, the fact that they do go down so easily is kind of the reason that I was hesitant to go after the silver sword before going to the next dungeon. But as I said before, the boss in the next dungeon, kind of hard. Even with my silver sword, I still need to use magic in order to make him vulnerable. So having the silver sword means that once he's vulnerable, I'll have to hit him less times, which means I'll have to use less magic to beat him. That is the idea here. Now then, here we are at the top of Death Mountain, and right here is the next dungeon, Turtle Rock. Can you guess why it's called Turtle Rock? That's right, it's because it's a raccoon. Now then, in order to get into this place, I'm first going to have to get into the light world. Which unfortunately means dealing with more of these rock monsters, so... Get out of my way. Okay. So after that, we don't have to open this portal again, so let's just jump into the portal. Now we're on top of Turtle Rock. So in order to open this place, we're going to need the Quick Spell. It's probably pretty obvious. But before I open this place, I want to bring something up. So for a while now, I've been recording this Let's Play at 60 frames per second. Not the entire Let's Play, I want to say maybe around half of it. But the reason I bring that up is because many of the effects in this game are ran at 60 frames per second. For example, the quick spell. And also, when I open this up, that'll also be at 60 frames per second. There's going to be a whole lot of shaking going on where it's practically going to be like we have two images 
layered on top of each other. That is how rapid the shaking is when you open this place. The reason why I'm telling you guys this is because apparently even though I'm recording at 60 frames per second, YouTube only displays this video at 30 frames per second. So when this place opens up, it's probably going to be like there'll be some shaking here and there here and there, but not as much as it should be. Apparently, YouTube only displays a video at 60 frames per second if it's an HD video. And this video is not HD. I do not have a good enough internet connection to be recording or streaming at HD, especially not 60 frames HD. I just wanted to bring that up because it's dumb. So let's go ahead and open this place. I mean, when it comes to that entrance down there, sure, it'll always look like it's one image layered on top of another, but I mean, the entire surrounding area was supposed to look like the entrance did. Well, we got this place open, now let us proceed onward. Uh, it's too bad there's not a healing spell, or I would totally use it right now. Because we got a magic potion right here. And the reason we have a magic potion right there is because we're going to be using a, a, the Cana Samaria a lot in this dungeon. For you see, with the Cana Samaria, you can create moving platforms. And there's going to be plenty of these in this place. For example, you got to do it right here. Okay, good. That guy did not zap me. I'm gonna go in here a little bit real quick to get a little bit of magic back. And then from here, well, unfortunately, we have to place another platform, but that's okay. Creating these platforms, while it costs a little bit of magic, barely costs any. In fact, it seems like it's only every other platform that costs magic. That's how little it costs. Speaking of magic, there's a totally a big potion under one of these skulls, but I'm going to hold off on grabbing that because, well, I'm going to be using a bit of magic in here because another item that we're going to be using a lot here is the fire rod. Let us go ahead and travel along this way. I'm going to have to do this a certain way because these torches are timed. They will only stay lit for so long, so I don't want to light them too early. I believe I'm going to start by lighting these two, like so, and then light these two as I pass them. Now that they're lit, we can go in here, where we have rolling spikes. Aww, I, I totally was able to time that on my practice run. Curse of the Let's Player. Okay, so we got the map. Let's take a look at this place. This place is not terribly complicated. There are some dead ends here and there. You're going to want to go through certain ways first. But compared to some of the previous dungeons in this game, this is not a bad dungeon. Give me some magic and a key. Now to make my way back. I could actually just use one of these invisibility items to get through here, but I'm going to need the magic. Speaking of which, there was a big potion under here. I could have gone ahead and used invisibility to get out of there, because the big potion fills your magic meter all the way to the top. Guaranteed. Even if you use a magic spell while it is refilling, it will not stop refilling until you're at the top. I think. I mean, I've seen it be that way, but now that I think about it, I'm kind of curious about something. No, no, I didn't want to go yet. Next magic potion I see, next big potion that is, 
Uh, I would totally get out Mr. B right now to get rid of those little guys, but Mr. B will go after the skull head, and Mr. B can't kill the skull head. Here, let's do this smartly. I said smartly! Screw you. So, let's see here. We're gonna go ahead through here. Watch out for those things. Oh, really? And we got the compass. So where is the boss located? The boss is down there at the bottom. Because of course it is. So I'm gonna wanna travel along here and we got this situation. Laser eyes. And you'll also note that the door we came through is completely gone. In order to shut the eye and get back through the door, we have to face away from the door. And back away into the door like so. That is an interesting gimmick. And by the way, anybody who is familiar with Ocarina of Time might wonder if you can kill the eye with Silver Arrow? You can't. It won't even reach the eye. It'll just get trapped on the door. So I'm gonna go over here now. A little bit of health. I'm gonna want a lot more health, actually. Oh, no, no, no! Oh, thank goodness he didn't zap me. Oh, ah, oh, I was not prepared for that. I wanted to see if I could, like, spam my magic spells over and over again. That would have been an interesting experiment. So there's a locked door there, but we're going to ignore it and go this way. And as for you, Silver Arrow. Silver Arrow is insanely po powerful. It's just a question of whether you can aim it. Uh, so here we have one of these rooms. Now interestingly, these tiles when they pull out initially for form an 8. I don't know if that was intentional, but it reminds me of the rocks out there that have a number 8 on it. Unfortunately, we have to wait for these to clear the room, because it's the only way that the door in the back there will open. And now we have passage. And in here, we basically got... Oh, hold on a sec. Now is my chance to do some experimenting. So we got a fairy there. Cool. What is the fastest spell that I've got? We're gonna go with this spell. And see what happens if I just use this spell over and over again while my magic's refilling. Oh, it does not pause while I use this attack. So, no, you cannot spam magic like that. Was an interesting thought. I suppose another option would have been to try the magic cape and see how much that extends. Not important. By the way, there's no secrets in that room. No pullable tongues, no bombable walls. You're only in there for some magic and a fairy. So if I'm not mistaken, and I'm not, that only leaves one door. And that would be the door over here. Time to get out some more arrows or I could just walk around him that works too you know what feel felt like killing him anyway and now we got these bouncy guys these guys are the main reason why we're gonna be using the fire rod because it kills them in one hit if I try using my sword I'll just knock out the pieces of him and all his pieces will bounce around the room and it's kind of dangerous in fact, I might have to demonstrate that a little. Huh. We got Chain Chomps. It won't be the only time a Chain Chomp appeared in a Zelda game. OK, 
Okay, so I believe in order to make this relatively easy, I'm going to want the Cane of Burna. The good news is I'm at full health, so that'll actually make this really easy. Because I can just do this. I can't do that. You can't shoot your beam whenever you're using the Cane of Burna. Huh. I was not aware of that. So that's actually going to make it more difficult than I was hoping. Pause, pause, pause. Come on. Pause faster. Hit that. Dodge. And we're going to want to push this block. Hit this again. Ooh, that was close. Ah. It's a good thing I got magic potions. Uh, we got a bunch of bouncy things in here. I'll get out my magic powder just in case. Head this way first. There's going to be a couple small potions in here. And there's one of those bouncy guys. Oh, hold on a sec. Ah! Dad! Stop that! Okay, well, good thing I got magic powder. Come here, you. That sounds like it must have hurt. I'll grab these squiggles in a bit. Sorry, I had to. By the way, this might look complicated, but it's not. No, time for more magic powder. Just get rid of these guys now so I don't have to deal with them later. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get out Bombos, because it's gonna be a little bit helpful for right here. I don't think it'll kill the guy on the right, though. Oh, it does! Cool! I wasn't really sure. By the way, in one of my failed recordings of the Ice Dungeon, I somehow wound up using the Bombo spell, but instead of using the Bombo spell, I just used MP, but didn't use the Bombo spell, if that makes any sense. You know what, it'll make more sense if I just show you a clip. Watch my magic meter in the clip. Okay, what just happened? Did you guys see that? I tried using my Bombos medallion and it used up magic, but it did not actually do anything. So I used it again. What the heck? Okay, so, got another one of these laser eyes, and I'm gonna have to face him in order to open that door. Good news is, it's not really a concern, because I can get in there before he starts lasering me. And now we got the big key. Now we can start making our way back on the other side. Here we are in this room again. Got anything useful under here? Indeed. Thanks for that. I'm a little curious about something. Well, first off, you cannot carry this into one of these pipes. Huh. <laughs> I don't know why, but I find that humorous. That is dangerous. Don't do that. Uh, still don't need these skulls, but I think this might be my last chance to get at them. Yeah, I will not be back in this room. So go ahead and grab these now. Oh, they weren't even health. Let me take another look at this map. There's one room that I'm thinking of, and I'm trying to remember where it is. I know where it is. So, 
let's go ahead and take this pipe now. And we're going to come in here with a couple of these guys. Now that I know that Bombos will kill them, I can just use Bombos and save my MP. Anything useful under these? There's a heart. Rupee. And a little bit of magic. Alright, that'll do. And then this room. Uh, we don't want to be he here yet. Especially because of that. We also don't want to be here yet. This here. Because we can't be here. There's a big old treasure chest over there. Very useful item in there. But we're actually going to have to kind of go the long way around if we want it. Actually, I think the item is completely optional. I want to say... Yeah, it is. We could skip that item if we want. Hmm... It's tempting, but that item is really useful. Oh boy. So, you'll notice that there are three half-closed eyes and two open eyes. I want to say the two open eyes... Yeah, they shoot at you no matter what. So if I want to get through this... Okay, so in regards to the half-open eyes, they only shoot you if you look at them. So I can just kind of do this. And from here, I'm going to want to go ahead and toss a bomb over there. It'll be easier than backing up. And this door leads out into Death Mountain. Do you recognize this platform we're on? I talked about this platform in the previous episode. If I use the magic mirror right here, that is how we get to this cave entrance. And then we come to these guys. And as far as I can tell, the only way that I can actually deal with these guys is with the silver arrows. I mean, I can kill those guys up there with my sword, but these two in here, I'm going to have to do a little bit of targeting practice. There we go. Any way I can get those? Well, in theory, but it disappeared too soon. And then these guys, I can just sword them. All right, hammer time. And in this treasure chest is the last heart piece of the game. We're almost at 100% here. The last hit point that I've got sitting up there, the boss has it. Once I defeat the boss here, I will have maximum health. How awesome will that be? Hopefully awesome enough that it'll actually ensure survival of future events. Now we come in here where we can go ahead and grab this. You found the mirror shield. You can now reflect beams that your old shield couldn't block. I want to point out, by the way, that Link equipped the shield while it was popping out of the treasure chest. So he's actually holding the shield that is hovering over the treasure chest right now. That's weird. Uh, alas, no more carrot sword. It was fun while it lasted. Now I believe we're done over here, so let's go ahead and start making our way into getting skewered. Also fireballed. Whatever, there's going to be more health coming up. One of these guys, just fire rod him, but carefully. It is weird that that one ball wound up bouncing all over the place on me. Whereas normally, that's what's supposed to happen. The ball catches on fire and doesn't hurt you. Uh, nothing under these. So we're going to go to the right first. 
That's one of the few walls where you don't need a bomb to open. I'm gonna want to kill the slimes in here. Because otherwise, we cannot open that door. Or, more accurately, you cannot push this block until you defeat the slimes. That open that door there. Or, we can drop bombs on ourselves. Let's not have bombs dropping on ourselves. There was totally a bomb that was in this room that was falling into the next room. Did you see that? Okay, um, I don't feel like dodging around these, so... Time for some Cana Burna. I should have used it a little bit sooner there. Didn't think it would reach. Unfortunately, this room is totally going to max out our money. How do I keep walking over that? Stop walking over that. Yep, now we're at max money. I don't like it! But at least we're almost at the end of the game, so it doesn't matter too much. It is weird to be playing a game where- oh! Hi! It is weird to be playing a game where you actually have to be concerned about maxing out your money. Super Mario RPG has this problem as well. Okay, I'm gonna try a trick here. Watch this, this is gonna be neat. Oh, really? It worked on my practice run. I'm gonna try it again. There we go. That's how it's done. It passed right through me. Didn't cause any damage. The second time. You're apparently invincible whenever you're using the hookshot. Now, unfortunately, I can't use the hookshot to do that again because it'll just grapple onto the block. So in this case, I want a boomerang and I want to be quick. And onward we go. Oh, this room. This room sucks. I'm gonna want the cane of Burna. So let's go to the right first. Make our way up here. And that's why we want the cane of Burna. In theory, it's possible to avoid getting hit by those things. But I can't. No, what, 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 that, but, duh. Okay, that is why this room sucks. Th this thing, unless you're really good at controlling it, likes to just go wherever it wants. I was totally trying to go down. Okay, needed that magic. Speaking of down, let's head down here. Find a bomb, don't really need it. Now I need to make my way up there. Uh, I wish it would stop at the ledges. Instead, it kind of just chooses for you if you're not pressing a direction in time. Now this platform here, we need to get to. It opens the door at the end. Huh, apparently the platform you create is a glowy platform. Neat. Now I gotta try to make my way over this way. Oh, okay. Um, no, 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 no. Oh, uh, oh no! Get over here. And out of magic. That's okay. Made it to the end. So, not only will this thing just choose a direction to go if you're not pressing a direction in time, but you cannot double back. If you're going one way, you're dedicated to that one way. <sighs> Out of there. Okay, Mr. B. It is time for you to help me out. We got eyes on the side there, but we don't have to rush. We can just casually stroll along the way. In theory. The hard part about dashing is, you have to make sure you stop before you run straight off the edge here. 
now we come to this room. So I'm gonna go ahead and get in here. By the way, the mirror shield blocks lasers. That is why it is useful. Now getting out of here is a trick. In order to use this trick, you have to be charging your attack, which will allow you to hold your, sh uh, your shield to the side. And then we'll do getting over here. And then we're going to be doing it, getting out of here like so. Okay, Mr. B, get after that guy, knock him in a hole for me. No, 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 no. Oh, boy. Don't want to lose you yet. You were supposed to knock him into a hole, not into a space where you can't kill him. He takes too many hits for you, Mr. B. Don't do that. No, oh, I, I timed that poorly. And we got ourselves a key. And actually, I think we need the bomb for this one. So, in case you're taking a beating in this dungeon and you just want to not do it anymore, you can totally just come out here, use the magic mirror, and now you have yourself an escape route. You can hop down there, or you could find your way through here. We've been through this cave before. It drops down below where there's some of those worm things, and eventually you make your way into more holes and come back around here. If you don't remember this place by that description, too bad. I'm not showing you this place because I already showed it before. Showing it again would be redundant. Now then, just gonna go ahead and rush through here. You know, using the hookshot probably would have been a better alternative than Mr. B. Okay, almost done with this place. I can get out my magic powder to take care of. Well, I gotta have a reason to spend money. I don't know if I killed him with my sword or if it was my beam that wrapped red th that wrapped around his skull shield. There's another bouncy guy in here, isn't there? Oh, there's a little bit of magic. And since I'm at full health, that means it'll be pretty easy to get through here. I can just do that. take care of you right now and hopefully I don't take any damage anywhere yeah I'm gonna say it's my being that killed it because I don't think my sword can penetrate its skull from here can I reach you from the other side okay good I don't have to worry about you being a nuisance then Go ahead and grab some more stuff, because having stuff is nice. And do this. And do this. We're almost to the boss. I'll go ahead and create this platform first. So that I can grab some magic. And onward to the boss. Now for his boss, I'm going to want to have the ice rod. No, the fire rod to start off. We will want the ice rod at some point, but gonna want to start with the fire rod. So, within Turtle Rock, we got a three-headed turtle. Or maybe it's two heads and it has... Or rather, maybe it's one head and it has a couple of heads growing on its back. So, I want to show you what the blue thing is going to do before I do anything. The red one shoots fire, and the blue one... Eventually... 
is going to shoot ice. Which is a problem because that creates ice on the floor. Now, in order to be able to damage these guys, you absolutely have to use the rods. The fire rod on the ice head freezes it and makes it vulnerable, and the ice rod is going to make the fire head vulnerable. Hope I got enough magic if I stop failing at aiming. Stop failing at aiming. One annoying thing is, while explosions are going on, you can't pause the game. So... What do I want next? Actually, I don't think I need anything next. You had to take a pot shot. So that's that phase of the fight down. Now we gotta deal with this. Now this fight, part of the fight would be pretty hard with my regular sword, but now that I got the most powerful sword, he only goes down in three hits. It's too bad there's no special tricks to fighting this boss. He doesn't have any weakness to spells outside of the rods, which are actually required. And then once he's in his snake form, well, your sword is your only option. But, even though I did not make that as easy as I wanted to be, I did, in fact, at least beat him. And now, we have rescued Princess Zelda. I appreciate your coming so far to rescue me, as I thought you are the legendary hero. I have felt this from the first time we met. The first time, I'm pretty sure, would be the prologue that Ryusuta wrote. The one that I told you at the very, very, very start of this Let's Play. With that little art drawing that was drawn. I haven't forgotten all you've done for me, Link. All this time, you've worn a monster's form because you wanted to help me. I will never forget that. You're truly a gentered natured as you appear in that form. You mean as gentered natured? Gentered, gentle. I can talk. That form actually suits you in a way. Yeah, it kind of does. I wonder if Link will get changed back to normal once we beat the final boss. Well, it won't be long before we find out. Anyway, Ganon is waiting inside of his tower to pass through the gate linking the two worlds. Once Ganon enters the Light World, it is unlikely that anyone can stop him. Okay, I'm gonna have to ask this. Why not? Is he stronger when he's in the Light World? Does the light make him stronger? That would be kind of weird if the light made a dark being stronger. But if he stays in the closed space of this world, you can find him wherever he runs. Now, go to the Tower of Ganon. We will use our combined powers to break the barrier. Let's return peace to the country without fail. Do you understand? Absolutely. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. And with that, we now have a new mark on the map. That there is the final dungeon. Also, down at the bottom of the screen is all of my patrons. And next time, it's, boy, it's going to be interesting. Next time is, how do I word this? Shoot, I actually had this worded in a cool way, so I could close this episode in a cool way and that sort of thing, but now I can't word it into a cool way, because I forgot how to word it in a cool way. So I'll just do it in a lame way. It's going to be a two-part episode. I'll see you then.